Hello from Gardening at Dwensa here in Ireland. Today we're visiting a restored Georgian walled garden and it's one I haven't visited before so I'm quite excited. To get to the garden however we need to pass by Tintern Abbey which was founded by Cistercian monks around 1200. The abbey flourished for hundreds of years until King Henry VIII of England and his dissolution of the monasteries, which took place in 1536. Ireland was owned by England at the time, so Irish monasteries were dissolved as well as those of England and Wales. The abbey lands were then granted to Sir Anthony Coakley, an English nobleman from Staffordshire in 1562. The Coakley family, yes, marvel at the pronunciation of this unusual name, but I'm reliably advised that this is how the name is pronounced, in Ireland at least. Anyway, the Coakley family lived in these lands for the next 400 years. They modified the abbey and built many structures over the course of time, including bridges, a linen mill, a flour mill, battlement walls and the Georgian walled garden we are visiting today. This is a peaceful place nowadays, frequented mostly by hikers and walkers. And I'm really enjoying the walk, but we only need travel a little bit further through these woods to get to the garden now. So come with me and let's visit the Coakley Walled Garden at Tintern Abbey. I am sure we are going to love it. The entrance to the garden leads us down a narrow path, flanked on the left by Leucanthemum daisies. The white daisies make a striking statement and are backdropped by a laurel hedge, which is one of the few original plants from the garden, but we'll talk about that more soon. On the right, it's flanked by mixed ornamental planting. This Georgian walled garden was built by the Coakley family over 200 years ago. The garden is approximately two and a half acres in size. That's about 1.1 hectares. We can't be sure exactly when the garden was built, but it was certainly here before 1814, when it was already an established and beautiful garden and mentioned in a travel publication of the time. Sadly, over the years, the garden had become derelict and overgrown until restoration work by volunteers began 10 years ago, organised by Hook Tourism. The restoration work was based on a historical map from the 1830s, which showed the path structure, five bridges, the water drill, the outer enclosure, the location of the vegetable garden and fruit trees. This Victorian orangery was restored and was a sub-project all of its own. It was originally used to grow grapes and was where citrus plants were overwintered to protect them from frost. The east of the garden, which we've just walked through, contains ornamental plants. It's divided from the more functional west by that wall there and we'll just go through it now into the kitchen garden area. Normally vegetables are grown in abundance in this section of the garden, but the spring COVID-19 lockdown in Ireland meant that none could be sown this year. Before you ask, on entry to the garden we had been invited to pick and eat the apples down here and they were really, really delicious. 
old apple cultivars have been planted here, but the 1830s map upon which the restoration was based didn't show what plants were in the garden, and very few have survived, so there's a lot of guesswork. One original plant which has survived is the long laurel hedge, which backdrops the leucanthemum daisies we just saw in the last section of the garden. When restoration work began, it had achieved gigantic proportions and had to be pruned hard back. Now we pass back through the wall to the east ornamental side of the garden. To work out what plants had been in the garden, volunteers found old 1800s receipts for the purchase of peach, apricot, nectarine and cherry trees from Fennessy Nursery in Waterford and Miller and Sweets Nursery in Bristol. There's also mention in the archives of various plants growing in the gardens at Tintern Abbey during this period, such as geraniums, that's pelagoniums to you, carnations and daphne. See the diamond shapes to the flower beds here. These were put in later after earth sound archaeological geophysics discovered their existence. There had only been the trees here before, based on the map I mentioned earlier. And before we leave the garden, I look at some old-fashioned hollyhocks. These are single flowered and quite beautiful. They remind me of the abbey we visited in France a few years ago and I'll link to that video at the end. The fact that these tall plants are suffering from rust, a common complaint for, for hollyhocks, is cunningly hidden behind the perennials. Aren't they just beautiful? So now it's time to leave the Coakley walled Georgian garden. I hope you enjoyed the visit as much as I did. Thank you as always for watching and if you haven't done so already please hit the subscribe button. It helps the channel grow and allows me to continue to bring you interesting videos like this one. Thank you once again and see you on the next video. Bye!